examples of fish that stay in cold environment are like we have the fish seal or sea lion sea lion or fish just put sea lion they stay in very cold environments they can survive in very cold environments while our catfish here can survive in the more temperate environment like the environment that we have right now in warm environment yes in warm environment but then in place of temperature you put thermometer as in that place where you listed them the apparatus for it is thermometer. Can we put it in the bracket? Yeah, that's what I mean. Just put it in bracket, temperature, then put thermometer. Then for water pH, you use pH meter. Then for salinity, we use it, the saline meter too. Then turbidity, we use the searchy dicks. S double E C H I D I S C S C Dix Search Dix. I'll explain those ones later. So where did I stop? Okay, I was different fishes for different temperature. Then in the pond where you put I the way they taught you about pond, they told you put that you fill the water to a certain level. If the water is like this where we have in this pond now, if you reduce this water to about 10% of from the ground and this sun is shining on it it heats up the water gives the fish stress at that point the fish will not be able to eat if it's a gravid fish as in fish that already have egg it will release the eggs out you understand so temperature can really affect fish because if you put the fish under extreme temperature it won't eat and something that is not going to eat will not grow so that's why we normally raise the water to at least about three feet so your water should not be below 1.5 feet so it doesn't get too hot for the fish so what's the next one now water, water ph. ph okay now let's go to water ph water ph is water ph we use water ph to measure the level of acidity and alkalinity yeah. of the water. Hmm? Mm -hmm. I said we use water pH to measure the level of acidity. And alkalinity of the water body. Yeah, you too, we put a I'm gonna give you a some list you you take from zero from one to four point four one to five point five from one to point four point five uh, five point five no from just write one then dash to four point five mm -hmm, to five point five sorry mm -hmm. to five point five mm -hmm. very acidic then from eight to fourteen very alkaline then 7.0 only neutral neutral you see that 7.0 now that's the neutral that is water at its best water at its finest it doesn't have alkalinity it doesn't have its settled so but for you to attain that level of water you need to have like a lot of filter and some other um, like calcium carbonate you are used to add to the water to make it neutralize our normal borehole here is 5.5 our normal borehole here is 5.5 but like that 5.5 now we manage to use it to hash because we we'll have to pump the water a day before do it so by the time we pump it we pump it with pressure so that pressure now reduces the level of acidity in the water so by the time we want to use it in the morning to be probably like 6.5 right now currently uh, when i did my it in lagos then we did a, 
a sample test of all the waters that we were having in Lagos after that time, that was about 2007 or 2008 thereabouts. So after checking the whole water, we found out that there was only one water at that time in Lagos that was 7.0. So even the water we drink so is supposed to be 7.0, it's supposed to be neutral. So what affects this, uh, what makes the water to be acidic and alkaline? Do we have any idea? Okay. Activities that maybe um, all these um, industrial people carry out, maybe releasing um, toxic material into the floor, into the air, things like that can make water to be acidic. Okay, okay, that's that's good enough. That's good. Anybody have any other idea? Okay, one of the let me just explain to you. Like when you are digging a borehole now, as you keep digging. You meet different layers of water uh -huh. so you keep testing it because the soil there are limestones and other things in the soil so when they mix with water some of them makes it to be acidic so make it to be more alkaline so if you keep digging and you cannot find the neutral ground where you have water that is neutral or if you have water that is too alkaline or it's too acidic then you have to use other parameters to balance it up that will be going too deep People are not supposed to go in deep, deep into water quality. I just want to give people the real essence of what, why water quality and why it happens like that sometimes. Okay. So like if there is heavy rainfall now, the water level goes high. The level of acidity reduces a little bit. But when there is no rainfall and the water table is going down, the level of acidity tends to increase a little bit. I'm talking about your sumo now, because that's what we're going to be using to pump water for our fishes. So, okay, what's the next one? Salinity. Okay. Salinity, that is the freshness of the water. No, not as if it's fresh now, as in like what we call when we are looking at salinity now, we're looking at the level of dissolved salt in that water. The level of dissolved salt in the water. There are some fish species that we grow well in salt water, but we don't culture them in fresh water because they cannot survive the level of salinity in fresh water, but they can survive the level of salinity in salt water. Like there's a particular macrobranchum now worked on it years back. You're no macrofish. It comes to the salt water. It goes to salt water to lay its egg, then come to the fresh water to stay. So if those eggs are to come out, that water has to be salty. So that's the difference between salinity and fresh water uh, salinity and fresh water. So it varies, so different species, some stay here, why some stay there. Like scumbia, now you cannot see scumbia in fresh water. It doesn't have any business being in fresh water. It stays in the sea. So it's, it's only can survive well in saline water, but cannot survive well in fresh water. So let's go to, what's the next Turbidity. one? Turbidity. Okay. Turbidity can be defined as the level of transparency or the amount of dissolved particles in the water. Dissolved particles, dissolved particles. Okay, I see this turbidity now is one of the very crucial things you need to that we need to take note about. After the fishes, when you give your fishes food, they eat just like what I made mention of in the beginning. That is their house, it's their plate, it's their spoon, that's where they steal shit, that's where they eat and everything. So that's why sometimes when you put food in the water, if it stays some time 
and it has soaked with the water, the fish don't eat it. If the water is very, very polluted and it's smelling, the fish don't eat it. They don't eat at that period of time because just like you are in the toilet and you want to eat, the food will not pass through your mouth. So that's one of the reasons why we change water regularly. So you, one of the things you used to know when the water has gotten to the level of changing is the turbidity level of the water. There's a stretchy dicks we normally do. You dip it inside the water. When it's gone about 10, 10 cm, and you cannot see the dicks again, you know that that water is very turbid. But one of the easiest methods we use here, though I can look at the pond now and tell you this water is very turbid, it needs changing without even the sexy dicks because I've been doing it for a very long time. But for a beginner, you don't have a sexy dicks. All you just need to do is dip your hand into the water up to this level, then bend your palm. If you can see your palm inside the water, then the level of transparency is still okay. But okay. if you can't see your palm, then you need to start changing that water immediately, as soon as possible. That water is highly polluted. So one of the major causes of polluted water is the excrete that comes out of And one of the major sources of dissolved oxygen, the excrete, the remains of food. So these excretes and these remains of food, but well, let's not let me not go too deep into that because I'll start teaching about bacteria and algae and all that. But let's stop for now. People are not supposed to go that too far. So that's that about water quality. Do people have any question? Okay. I have a question but it's not about what we are talking no, right I now. Ask, ask, ask. Okay. The other day we talked about uh, treating the pond before you put your fish, fish. treating the pond with uh, lime, with, with droppings. Yeah. That is the organic way. I want to know if you want to use this ethyl pond, are you still going to use the same method you use in treating the concrete pond, in treating the ethyl pond? Mm -hmm. Like the, the one over here. Like the, for the ethyl pond now, yes. if you want to treat an ethyl pond, there are two ways you treat it. If it's a new pond or it's an old pond, okay. both of them you still do the same treatment to it. What you do now, you maybe like what well, is a new pond now. You just finish digging it. Okay. You spread your soda ash or lime, lime. calcium carbonate, CO, okay. CaCO3. Did they not teach people about that one? Mm -hmm. I thought I heard him the other time talking about calcium carbonate. You spread calcium carbonate around the pond okay. before you put in your water. You have to put in your water, then you cannot put your foul drop in okay. to fertilize the water. Mm. So you still do that same process for yes, tapolin? Yes, yes. No, no, for tapolin, you won't fertilize tapolin pond. Okay. You know, just put your water in and, put and put the fish, fish inside there. But for tapolin, if it's a new tapolin, you have to wash. Okay. You wash with salt. You can wash with salt. Some people wash with formalin. But your advice, you just wash with normal salt and omo. Okay. And just use normal salt to wash and use omo, that's all. Yeah, for concrete pond, you can do fertilization for it because tarpaulin pond, you are going to manage pollution very well. Okay. You understand? Tarpaulin does not accept much pollution like the way concrete pond will accept pollution. Okay. Mm -hmm. So tarpaulin, you are going to be running the water constantly. More if it's like in, if this was like if we are using the tarpaulin pond, we we'll run our water frequently, more frequent than we are running it now. Now we we'll just leave it when the water is very dead, when it's very turbid, then we we'll just say, okay, let's just reduce and add more. But if it's tarpaulin, you won't wait for the water to get turbid. Oh, wow. oh, They'll start dying. Okay, start dying. The mortality okay. mm, is then, usually very high, so you have to be very careful when you're using tarpaulin pond. Okay. Mm. There's another method of... Um, hmm? Tarpaulin pond is just that plastic tarpaulin now. Like this canopy now, the canopy they use in doing pond now. Some people use it to do swimming pool too. Okay. And those children, kiddies swimming pool, they pump air into it. And people jump inside the hand, something like that. That's a uh, leather tank. Because some people call it leather tank. Some people call it tarpaulin. Okay. So, okay. so whichever there, one. There's this other type of uh, fish pond I saw on TV the other day. Okay. Like, it's just like a lake, but you put your fish in a cage, different cages, and you put it down the lake. Okay. That kind of fish farming, mm. what kind, like, I don't know, I, I wanted to explain. Okay, that one is what we call industrial fishing. 
That's and we still call it cage culture. As you supposed to have told people about that one. Is that cage culture? We use it mainly for when you want to do large scale production okay. and you don't have the volume of land or these two ponds here alone. To build these two ponds is almost a million era. Okay. So when you want to build a pond that way you now have to take in like two hundred thousand fish thereabouts. You can't build this. Sorry, this pond for hatching. No, it's no, too big one. ones, yeah. So you can't build something that will take that lot. So they normally construct, it's cheaper. Okay, it constructs a cage, it makes it inside the water with floaters and other things. So you put the fish there. Okay. So it's usually cheaper. You can stock more fish there. Okay. Because now they are down on the, one of the major advantages is that if you can monitor that river and see that there's no pollution coming in, it's one of the best ways to raise fish. Okay, but because how do they feed this kind of thing? Yeah, you feed them. They, if you look at that this thing very carefully, you see a part where they put for somebody to walk okay. on. And like there's, a, there's one in, uh, what do they call it, in somewhere in Obiaroko here. The pond is as big as, it's big as 100 by 50. You know the way 100 by 50 is almost like the whole of this place. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that one, they use canoe to feed them. Mm, Padu canoe inside the pond. It's just one pond, but it's very big. No, you only rear grow out fishes there. Because mm -hmm. if you put small fish, because that kind of pond now you can't cover it with nets. Yeah. One, you can't cover it with nets. Two, mm. it will very very deep. They will cannibalize a lot. You yeah, so You can't sort. So it is the stage at which they can't, you are not going to sort again. You grow them up in this kind of grow out pond. Maybe probably they get to just after juvenile, then you put them there. Because birds will come and pick. Yes, so mm -hmm. like, um, you cannot cover them with nets. Because, because of the size. Because of the size. Mm. What is in a situation whereby um, there was a big downpour of rain and there was um, a very big erosion of flood and come and carry all your like fish and come and <laughs> take them all like they will go now <laughs> it happens every day every year in 74 but the thing is this when you are doing your survey for your land you have to look closeness to river and how does that river behaves okay. like river niger everybody knows river niger over floods its bank every year from august so even if you are going to be you're going to do fish in that kind of area, by that time, when you know the water will be rising, you're supposed to have harvested your fish. Then probably throughout the time where the flood will come, you rest. Then when the flood goes back, then you stock again. And you talked about putting them in a cage. Is what mm. kind of cage? Is it? See that if you stand up now and look at the back, you see a mini cage there. Those ones are used for tilapia. And those ones we use them for tilapia too. Um, to, um, just make use of uh, catfishes because I'm hearing um, tilapia. tilapia. Are you serious? You know, people rear it. Ah, it's like you don't need to frequent shop rights. No, because in my in my location, mm -hmm. I don't think I've seen tilapia. Ah, yeah. If you go to shop right, so there's to tilapia there. I don't know other fishes. No, there's tilapia. There are many, many other fishes. Mm -hmm. Many, many, many other fishes that can be cultured. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Just that the one that is more economical. Kind of uh, turbidity. Yes, yes, yes. So the the Eurochromis and Tilapia Marie we have now can survive in this kind of temperate region. Mm. And so you made mention of um, examples of fish that can stay in a cold environment. So mm. You said them um, and um, sea lions. Yeah. Excuse, what are the sea lions? Okay, you have not seen those things that look like mm. dogs that comes out in water. And go back <laughs> into the. Okay, those yes, fish. Yes, they comes out like it's not like shark. They call it seal. Okay. They call them seal, fish seal. But people call it the common name is fish lion. They call them sea lion. They look like they, look like they have whiskers. Yeah. Uh -huh. <coughs> people don't really eat them like that. People eat them. Why you say people don't eat them? People eat them now. Is there anything that people don't eat? Yeah. But yeah, that they are not common. They are not common. Yeah, they are not common on this side. Yeah. People eat them, but not they are not common here. If they were here, they would have gone to extinction. So is it the same <laughs> way you feed the normal catfish? That's how you also no, everybody has their own different feeding habits. Mm -hmm. Catfish is cannibal. Mm -hmm. Tilapia is omnivorous. Mm -hmm. Omnivorous that means that it can eat anything that it wouldn't 
that is not alive. You know, so if it comes and it meets decayed up can pick and eat, then mainly it eats leaves too. So we used to I used to feel I used to have this notion that tilapia fish were herbivores till I came to work with them and I saw that they are not just herbivores that if you, you can't even train them to become they can eat anything. No, they cannot eat human being if you are alive. Yes, okay. Okay. So and maybe they decayed, decayed meat. Okay. They can eat decayed meat. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. What about the sea lion? No, those ones are, you are so interested in sea. You want to go to Alaska. <laughs> you only find them in Alaska and Canada. Oh, okay. So it's not, you're not going to find them anywhere here. Okay. Mm. The only one you will find that is big like that is hippopotamus. Mm. Those are the ones. Hippopotamus is very common in River Niger. Pond, yeah, the tarpaulin, tarpaulin pond, pond mm. as you called it. Okay, you said the mortality rate is high. What's your advice to people who actually want to venture into fishing? And that's the only option. You know, that pond, can, you can actually make use of it in a small space or, you know, a space that you can just yeah, manage. Yeah, that is what I'm saying. You have to be able to manage your water. Constant changing of the water. You understand? The thing is this, as they are eating, they are pooing. So just like if you, you see this water now, if you change this water today now, it's very, very clean. It can be clean like that too. But the moment you put in food and they eat and they release the ones that is in their system, the whole water changes color. Okay. So you have to keep changing the water. Okay. So you mm. talked about um, the turbidity of the water. Mm. You have to check. So before just you put, change, your hand you put your hand and, and look at it. Bend your palm your towards palm you. Towards you. Mm. What exactly actually stains to your palm for you to be able to detect? You will be if you are able to see your the color of your palm. Mm. No, your palm is very bright. Mm. So if it's inside that water, and you can't see your palm. Then you know that that water is mm -hmm. is not good. Okay. Just that I've removed this water now. I will have used this one to do experiment for you people. No, I've, the water is completely down. Yeah. Mm. I have another question. Um, let me say, I'm interested in hashing myself, like doing the artificial spawning myself. If I want to do it, what kind of um, pond do you advise I use in a situation whereby I can't do a tin or concrete pond? You can still use tarpaulin to spawn now. To spawn? Yeah, you okay. can still use tarpaulin. You can still even use the other white tank. That's the, the rubber. The rubber, like yeah, they call it vat, yeah, exactly. Okay. The one that is specially made for spawning. Okay. Yeah, I saw it in Lagos some time back. It just it's not very big. It's made they make it from the company direct. They just make it just for spawning. Okay. But you don't mass produce it because people don't buy much. So if you want it, you go to the company, you order for it, they'll give it to you. Sir, so mm -hmm. when you talk about pumping with pressure. Is mm. it actually the heat that reduces the acidity? No, 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 no. The pressure of the water, the pressure is coming in. Okay. And as it's creating those bubbles and all those things, it's reducing the level of acidity so when in the water. So you stir also? That you can still stir it okay. too. Okay. It's to still reduce the level of acidity in the water. Okay, sir, so, like, for example, you want to go into fish farming. Mm. As a beginner, is it advisable to start with an eating pond? <coughs> Depends on what you want to do. Like, you want to rear really catfish? Mm -hmm. And depend on the land that is available to you. If you have a swampy land, you cannot go and building concrete pond on swampy land. Now that's okay, madness. The, the land is high, it's not swampy. It's not swampy, yes. you cannot dig a tin pond in a, swamp, in a high land now. You have to do concrete or tarpaulin. Okay, let me say it's normal, it's not high, it's not low. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you see, before you do a tin pond, I see one of the things we are, we are having advantage here mm -hmm. for this a tin pond now. You see those pipes there? Okay. If we release this water here, they all come inside here. Okay. That's one of the advantage we have. If not, we will not be able to sustain this water. If I lock this place now, water don't come in here okay. for the next two weeks. This thing will dry. dry. Not if it will dry completely, but it will go too low that it will not start giving the fish problem because so, of the so, heat. So, so what kind of location are you? So if you want to do mm -hmm. con um, um, ethane pond, look for a swampy area. And do your eating pond. If you want to do concrete, you do it on the highland. Okay. But the eating pond, do they still change the water? Uh, it depends now. It depends on how often the land seep water in. Okay. So if mm. But if you want to harvest, you have to pump the water out and oh. bring the fish out. Okay. Mm. 
Okay, if I got you right, you said all the water from here goes inside there. So it means that the turbid water that yeah, you pump goes out inside, from here goes, goes inside. inside. Yes, yes, goes inside. How does that help? The fish. Ah, do we, this is eating pond. Doesn't okay. really affect them that so much. So the turbidity of the water doesn't really affect in an eating pond. Yeah, it will not really affect them much compared to the concrete tank because you know why the ground has pores. Okay. It's receiving those water. Mm. You normally replace this water. That's why I'm just saying that as water is as the heat is hitting the water is evaporating. Mm -hmm. The ground is collecting some too. Mm -hmm. It's soaking some. So that's why the water keeps going down. So we need to keep feeling it. Okay. Mm. But, so I'm your fish now. but it's not only the turbid water that comes in. Okay. Okay. Other so water still comes in too. Water. Yeah. So it's not just only the turbid water that is going there like that. Right? Okay. Okay. So like now this uh, where these fries are and the ones we hashed now are flushing that water. That water is not turbid. Yes, because we've mm -hmm. not put feed. We've in. not put feed. No, we've put in feed inside, but it's not turbid yet. But just flushing so that you can increase the level of dissolved oxygen in the water. Because fish, they need oxygen. But this one now, why they are not... Like if you come to a pond now, you see the big ones are coming up to gasp for air. But these ones are too small. They don't have that techno that idea to come up to gasp mm -hmm. for air. So they are, they are using up the oxygen inside the water. So if you don't keep flushing and giving them new water, by the time they use up the whole oxygen, they start dying. But until before they start coming up to start taking air from oxygen from the okay sir what kind of fish uh, are you culturing here catfish normal catfish is it okay for them like the water sure it's okay it's okay if it's not okay you will be seeing them floating you will be dead by now okay then then sir like now you want to invest your fish when you use an um, eating pond like when you get everything out or you still have some remaining yes you know like like this an eating pond now it's usually why most people don't like using eating pond because it's usually very difficult to harvest after harvesting this fish now you will need to dig yes. you understand like if you want to sell now after you sell your fish now you have to pay some boys to come and dig the pond round okay. because these catfish they are mud fish to and one of their major, one of the their habitats is to dig inside mud. You see, like, I don't know whether they taught people when they were teaching people pond construction. We don't dig eating pond straight. Did they teach people that one? No, no. We dig it in a V-shape. Because they eat. If I drain this water down for you now, this was not, they didn't do this work well. Not this one, they just, they were just done by students mm -hmm. without supervision. <laughs> if you look at it now, the fishes are already eating the walls so if you dig it straight and you dig another one straight in a place where there are plenty of pond before you know the fishes will connect each other they will do a channel where they will be connecting each other and by the time a big fish swims into <laughs> where juveniles are ah, here yeah, you know what will happen yeah. so that's why when you want to dig an eating pond you dig it in a v-shape so that no matter how no especially in a place where they are going to be putting many of many other ponds too uh -huh. So they don't eat into the other pond. If I bring this pond down, you see holes, holes where the fish is because they always start their work. But that only happens in the concrete. If you go to concrete, you see them. If you go there now, as I'm not giving them food now, you see them scratching the wall. Mm -hmm. They are one of the major causes why we do renovation of pond because they eat, they scratch it. They use their teeth to scratch it. They are one of the things that they do because. They don't have any game to play, they don't have TV to watch. <laughs> so it's the only thing that they just sit there, they'll be doing, they'll just be using to have fun. So as soon as they crack it, they enter the other side. Just like that. So that's one of the major this thing. So when you talk about fishes in the wild and the one in captivity, mm. does the eating pond give them that feel of being the wild? Being in the wild? Yes. No, they want to say yes and no. Okay. It gives them that feel that they are in the wild in the sense that they can dig into the mud, you understand, for warmth. Like if the sun is too high now, they dig into the mud. But if it, the sun is too high here, they'll form school. Okay. okay. So they are still not able to secrete the... No, 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 they can't secrete the hormone. Because the female does not... It takes the male to a very, very deep part of the water. Okay. You understand, it's one of the deepest part of the river. That's where they go and... Mates. Mates. Yeah. Not really the mates. She don't, they don't mate. Okay, she lay, lay egg, then the male spreads okay. this, this thing on it. So it's not really mates. They don't have physical okay. this thing. 
So you just go there, spread the eggs. But she takes him away from where the other fishes are, because they are cannibals. Okay. You understand? So they cannot meet where another family of fish is there. They can eat okay. up the eggs. They will eat up everything. So even you yourself, the mother herself, you are not afraid of the ones that are around you, sir, because they can just decide to eat you today. And they are cannibals now, so they don't want to put their children into that kind of... They say, when they even go to the wild, say, after she lay the eggs, and the man fertilizes it, when the children comes out, the man stays back and guides those children for, I think, three weeks, three mo two months, while the mother discharged. So it's the man that do all the baby caring and everything. <laughs> So the man that do all the caring and everything, then though he eats some of them, sure, when he's about to go. He <laughs> 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 uh, uh, has been there for the past two months now. He doesn't have strength again now. Hey, whoa. So he doesn't <laughs> move. Yeah, he has to guide them now from other predators that are coming. Mm -hmm. So he eats some of them and leave them after two months so they are on their own from there. Okay, so, sir, with all these things you've said about the eating pond, would you advise a beginner to start with an eating pond? Well, I wouldn't I really advise a beginner, but depend on what you have. I won't advise a beginner to start with eating pond, but depend on what the person has. You understand? Like an eating pond now, you see this pond now is not covered with nets. Okay. You understand? So your fish have to be big. They have to be at grow juvenile before you bring them inside here. You understand? Because where you pull, well, I'm saying you have to let them get that size because okay. you're not going to sort again. I know so many people that there was a time we supplied one man fish, about 3,000 fish, fingerlings. He didn't tell us he was taking them to Etienne Pond. Mm. So he just took them and put them inside the Etienne Pond. I was feeding them. Birds will come, eat. Then at the end of the day, the man came but only wanted to harvest. He brought out the fish out and saw that the fishes that he had were about 300. He started shouting that this thing, but inside that 300, there were like 10 of them that were very, 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 very big. Ah, so those ones, so those ones have been eaten. Options. So you will not be able to sort. You understand? That's why we don't encourage people to put fish into the eating pond at, at least if you want to put, say you want to put juvenile, not fingerling, because at that juvenile stage, you're not going to sort again. Mm -hmm. So you just put juvenile inside and you can leave them. But if you're not stocking juvenile, you want to stock fingerling, then you don't you can't start with eighteen pounds. So okay, so no, you start you, you can use nets, but what I was trying to explain to her that we cannot sort the fish. You can use net to cover it too. Now you say it's not possible for you to use net. Even the one that is very big self, you can still use net to cover it. But how do you sort the fish? You now carry engine and go there and suck the water out again and I gather them and I start sorting them. It's going to be very tedious and a lot of fish will enter inside the machine because they are very small at that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's not advisable to stock fingerlings in Etim Pond except juvenile or the ones that are bigger than juvenile. Oh, okay, well, mm. but sir, what if the Etim Pond like is already there and you want to use it mm. but you find out that the water used to dry when it's a uh, dry season. Can okay. you be pumping water into yeah, water. sure. You can be pumping water. You can be pumping water. Yeah, yeah. So many people have that, yeah, but you have to put a very, very big pumping machine there, okay. industrial pumping machine, because it's not easy to pump water into this thing. Okay. Mm. Like it will be sucking the water as you are pumping. As you are pumping, yeah. so you need to pump it with pressure so it can stay. Okay. The another thing you can do again for it is you use mud. You carry like you can buy a tipper of mud, clay. Clear them, spread it on the bottom of the pond before pumping water. It will help to retain the water. Okay. Not necessarily during dry season. Say the water is always drying up, okay. mm, like maybe the place is not really an, a swamp and they are just the old dog eating pond in it. Okay. Uh -huh. So if you want to just still use it, you need to either mud pack it or you dunk it. And in dunk it, you mean you put cow dunk inside, it helps too. Okay. Mm. So, what should I want to be? I think we finished anything about water yes, quality. Mm. So we're just asking general questions. Okay. Give us only one course of quality. One. Major source. What's the major source I gave you from? 
squid. She said dissolve in food, then escape. What other thing can cause pollution in water? Probably the time. The time if it stays for too long. If it stays for too long, if you put water somewhere for too long, we will not just get turbid like that now. Mm -hmm. The activities of the fish. So you talked about um, when they dig, sometimes you could find some stones that can actually... Was it? Dig. Is in using their teeth to scratch them? Yeah. No, that one was, I was talking about something different. No, different. Okay. On that which topic? No, we are looking at causes of turbidity. Because yeah, one of the major causes of turbidity is their excrete. Yeah, mm. One of the major causes of turbidity is their excrete. Okay, I'll tell you about algae production and all those other things. I said I didn't want to go deep into it. Mm. It's still the this thing now. Bacteria and other things act on that. This thing, what do you call it? on the poop and all those things that they come up with so those things now tends to if they are too much it gives the fish disease i don't require all to go deep into that one because they are going to teach you fish disease and parasite later i think that's what i was supposed to teach today but i was not prepared for this class so i just want to run you down with a bit uh, water quality first so probably even if there are other things i didn't remember in the next class i would brush you put down those ones <laughs>